Hello and welcome to the Chapter 8 Workout Problem video. Let's go ahead and begin with Problem 1, Labor. So in this problem, we have a population with 8 million adults. Out of those 8 million, there's 5 million that are employed and 500,000 that are unemployed. And the rest is out of the labor force. So the first question, what is the population or what is the unemployment rate? Well, we figure this by dividing unemployed, okay, the amount of people unemployed, so that's our unemployed, by the labor force. So the labor force is employed versus uh, and unemployed. That's our total labor force. Labor force, right? So we're not using the total population. We're just using those that are either employed or that are unemployed and are looking for work, right? There's a lot of people that aren't even looking for work. Maybe they're going to school. Maybe they're uh, stay-at-home parents. Maybe they're whatever. They're not even looking for work. Those are out of the labor force. What share of the population is in the labor force, right? Again, we defined this right here, 5.5 million as the labor force. So we're going to go ahead and take that right here, right? So this is our labor force. And we're going to go ahead and divide it by our total population, 8 million. In, in these, both of these cases, we're now uh, multiplying by 100. And what that does is it takes our decimal form, right, of our, our percentage or our ratio and moves it into a, per, a percent, right? So the, and in this case, it would be 0.6875 multiplied by 100 would be 68.75%, okay? So we've got those two things. So that is the share of population in the labor force and the unemployment rate. Now we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to build a graph that represents this population as a whole. So to build the graph, we're going to go ahead and draw a circle. So we're going to do a pie graph, right? Okay, so here's our circle. And uh, we have to do a couple of calculations to be able to know how to divide our circle up, right? So we're going to sketch this circle out here a little bit. And the easiest way to do that is the circle represents, right? It represents 8 million people. Okay, that's 100%. That is 100% of the circle. What percent of the circle is the labor force? Well, we got that back here on this last slide, right? So the labor force is 68.75%. We'll say roughly it's 69%, uh, right? So 69% of this graph here should be the labor force. So we're going to go ahead and maybe let's draw a chunk out here. Okay, so this this area right here, right, from here, from here, right, all the way around to here represents the labor force, right? So this is the labor force. But so what percent is the unemployed out of the 8 million? Well, what we have to do to get that is we'd have to take our 500 uh, thousand, right? Divide that by our eight mil here, right? And that would give us what percent we're looking at. And maybe this is bad. I shouldn't actually abbreviate because that gets confusing. Uh, so let's go ahead and do the. Let's draw it out the full way, right? So this is five hundred thousand divided by eight million with six zeros is mi is millions, right? Eight million, okay. So that's what we're doing, and then that's going to give us roughly about uh, 6%. That's going to be about 6%, so we're just going to draw a little chunk in here, and we're going to say that that right there is unemployment. Okay, so that's unemployed, and the rest here is our uh, are employed, right? So the employed is going to be our 5 million, right, with six zeros here, divided by the total population. So how many out of our total population are employed? And that's going to give us roughly about 63%. So 
So that's 63%. This one's 6%. This one's 63%. You can actually plug this in and do it with Excel if you want to. Excel will actually draw the graphs for you and, and break them up. That's kind of cool. Okay, so the 63% are the employed. Okay, and then the last bit, which we can tell, so this is about 69%, right? 63 plus 6. And so about 31% of our population, which we could uh, calculate by taking the the total population, which is 8 million, right? Here's our 8 million. And subtracting out our labor force. So we're subtracting out our 5,500,000, right? And that, what's that going to give us? That is going to equal our out of the labor force. So this is our out of the labor force people. And then and the out of labor force. And then what we're going to do with that is th this right here, the out of the labor force number that we get from this calculation, right? We're going to divide that by our 8 million. And that'll tell you, tell you what the entire chunk of the, uh, the out of the labor force um, is going is going to be for us it's two and a half million right 2.5 million basically is what it is that's what it is and so this right here this 31 percent which this will get a, if we do our 2.5 million divided by 8 million it's going to give us 31 percent and that is the uh this is the out of lb we'll say la oh, lf sorry lf labor force Okay, so that's what it's gonna look like. Mine's a little sloppy, but hopefully you can kind of see me do it and uh, maybe make yours a little prettier. Okay, wonderful. Okay, now we're doing problem two. Problem two is about the labor market. So these, these last two problems really are kind of what ifs. And then they and then we have some graphs here that I'm showing that you can draw out and, and analyze the shifts or the changes because of policy or a change in demographics and the impact of it on the labor market. So this what if is this. It says the government passes a family friendly law that no companies can have evening, nighttime or weekend hours so that everyone can with, uh, can be home with their families during these times. Analyze the effect of this law using a demand and supply diagram for the labor market. First assume that wages are flexible, then assume that wages are sticky downward. Okay, so so let's go ahead and assume, so right here, right, at WE and QE, this is equilibrium. So this is where we begin, and then all of a sudden we have this, this policy that says, okay, companies can't do, can't hire anybody for nighttime or weekend hours. So what does that do? Does that affect the supply of labor or the demand for labor? It's, it's going to affect, and, and really to decide, you kind of have to at, ask these questions, right? So are families less willing or more willing? Are there more families? Or are there more people willing to work hours or uh, not able to work hours, right? Well, they can work. The, the idea is, though, that the companies can't hire them, right, with the rule. So the rule is companies cannot hire them anymore. Okay, so... So what it, what it is, is the demand for labor it are, is the employer side. So this is the employer, right? Employer. The supply of laborers are the employees, right? These are the people that are willing to work. These are the people that are willing to hire them. So in, in a normal free market, right here at equilibrium, the people are free to work if they want to and employers are free to hire if they want to. In this situation that we're given, who's not free to do what? It's the employers are not free. No companies, it says here, no companies can, right? So the employers are not free to hire. So they, they cannot demand labor during those hours. So really demand is going to be reduced. And when we reduce demand, we're going to shift it to the left okay 
So this direction is a reduction. Okay, so, so our demand is going to shift, which gives us a new demand curve here. Okay, we see the new demand curve there. So this one, this one's maybe, we'll call this one D1. This one was the original, so we'll call it DO. Okay, so with this new demand curve, where does it meet supply now? Where's the equilibrium? It's gonna be right here, right? Okay, right there is the new equilibrium. Perfect. So what does that do to uh, wages? Well, if they're flexible, that's our first scenario. First, assuming wages are flexible. If wages are flexible, then this will be the new wage, right? So this is gonna be, we'll call this wage uh, one as, as our shift in wages. Okay, so we're gonna be shifting. If they're not flexible, then and we can kind of just ignore this up here. If they're not flexible, then this is the scenario, right? So the wage will remain at WE, our equilibrium, our original equilibrium. When demand shifts, right? If it's flexible, it'll let the wage drop. But now since it's not flexible, the wage is actually going to be right here. Okay. That's gonna be the quantity, the new quantity demanded. So the employers cannot hire people during nights, weekends, all that stuff. So this really is the new quantity demanded. The quantity supplied because the wages or the people willing to work because they're being paid so much, right? Is, uh, is still gonna be up here at QE, the original quantity, right? is still gonna be up there, and, and the, the wages are gonna be up there. So wages are sticky, they're not coming down. What What is that gonna cause? Uh, just like in the example that was written in here, this will cause unemployment, okay? So that's gonna be unemployment right there, possibly. Assuming that, that we have sticky wages, because what's gonna happen is the quantity of those of demand is gonna be lower than the quantity that's being supplied. So the, the supply of labor, people who want jobs are not gonna be able to find them because there's really not the demand. Okay, problem number three. As the baby boomer generation retires, what should happen to wages and employment? Okay, before they retired, this is gonna be our equilibrium. After the, after, they retire, what is going to happen is the supply of labor is going to shift to the left or it's going to decrease. Okay, so we're going this direction with the supply. Not as many people working. That's why it's shifting, right? So all the baby boomers are going out. The people, there's not as many to fill their, as, to fill their spot. And so this is our new supply curve. We'll call it S1. Okay, this is the original SO right here. Okay, so if that happens, then what happens to uh, wages, right? So wages, if we're operating at this new equilibrium, wages will rise right here. So this is gonna be the new wage right here. Wages will rise, wages will rise. So uh, what about employment? What about employment? So, so there is going to be a decrease in our quantity, right? Our equilibrium quantity of employment, depending on the, the, la the total labor force. If the labor force is decreasing overall, then the total uh, percent, right, of unemployment, the employment, unemployment rate's not going to be uh, increasing, okay, because the, the the total pool is getting smaller as the boomers, baby boomers retire. So um, this is something, uh, I guess the only change is this. So the only possibility, right? So wages, wages for the most part are gonna go up. Employment is gonna stay pretty much the same. Uh, quantity, right, the quantity demanded will stay uh, about well, it's, it's gonna maybe be reduced. Uh, well, 
slightly, right? The quantity. And that's that's okay because our our labor pool is also getting smaller. But this is one thing that may happen. So as highly skilled experience, so some people with a lot of experience, the baby boomers retire, there may be an adjustment in the the wage rate, right? So maybe employers aren't gonna be as willing to pay the new people that have less experience the as high of wages as the old uh, as the baby boomers that left so there could be an adjustment for that as well right so there could be an adjustment for that 